Okay. So welcome to the satsang again. And um, today I'm happy to talk about the yoga balance, how the word balance is very important in yoga and what it means. Okay. So it's a virtue that we need to cultivate. So how a balanced person looks like. Mm. So if you achieve what we call inner balance, you are centered. You are complete. You are fulfilled. You're not missing something. You are being calm in meeting all challenges in all situations in your daily life. A restless person is not balanced. A restless person is always looking for something to complete him or herself, running here, running there, trying this, trying that. That person is not balanced, actually is in a state of imbalance. But the state of balance is a state of being, so it has to come from within you. And that is lasting and sustainable. So you can imagine that you have to work to attain to that state of being It's not coming naturally. We all have some imbalances to start with. But the practice of yoga help you to reestablish your state of inner balance. So when you are in a state of balance, you're not avoiding anything. You're open to life. You're not avoiding anything or anybody. You're not running towards something. You're not in a state of being um, extreme in anything. You are balanced in the pairs of opposites. Heat and cold. Honor, dishonor. have and have not. So all the time you are in a state of balance and you can say that you are detached. We can talk about detachment later on. So I talk a lot about detachment. The Bhagavad Gita, which is a scripture of yoga, talk about being balanced in success or failure. That means whatever you do, if you if you achieve that, you're fine. If somebody come and destroy your work, you're fine. If you don't get what you want, you're fine. Because it's a state of inner balance. It's not a state that depends on something externally or depends on any kind of achievement outside, which is our normal state of mind. So when you are in a state of inner balance, you are very, very calm. You can do whatever it is, but your inner state is very calm. It's like you are being in the eye of the hurricane, you know, the hurricane, big storm. And when you are in the middle, it's very, very still, very powerful. You can imagine that state.
So it is something that you need to cultivate. We are suffering most of the time because we are not being balanced. But oftentimes we blame somebody because we are suffering or we blame a situation because we are suffering. Our mind goes up and down. We live a life like going through a roller coaster up and down. We appear calm from outside. We appear balanced from outside, but in reality, inside we are not. It's like a storm <laughs> inside. We are restless and unfulfilled. Why? Because we are subjected to unceasing desires and dissatisfaction. It's the inner core of ourselves. We are not satisfied. We are seeking for something. And then we try this and try that and we are being disillusioned and dissatisfied. So we are in a state of um, being in need. So we are hankering for peace and for fulfillment. And yet we experience restlessness and emptiness. Why? Because we are seeking for happiness in the external, in the central in the changing, in the untrue. So that's why we need to seek balance, inner balance, state of mind. It is a worthwhile goal of yoga. So if you don't know what to do with your yoga practice, you can at least Remember that one word, balance. So how do you find balance? So in the yoga philosophy, there is a, a theory that is very helpful. It's a theory of the gunas, tamas rajas sattva. To find balance is to, uh, is to lead a sattvic, pure lifestyle. That means that you need to correct and adjust your lifestyle bit by bit, so you become more sattvic. Okay? So you need to have balance in food. Eat sattvic food. The food that you can digest, the food that is uh, not harmful, the food that is uh, uh, cooked with love, nutritious, based on nature, being close to nature in general in your lifestyle helps you to balance. If you can, live life in nature. Because life now has become very artificial. Life is out of balance. We spend many, many hours in the traffic. We go here, there, all, all, very often. And then we eat artificial food. That comes from very, very far. We don't spend time uh, providing ourselves with food. It's a, in general, I don't have to explain too much. You can look around, you will see life is out of balance. But you also have to achieve balance in company, sattvic company. 
means company of people. Balance, find balance in relationships. What that means? It's not like something, somebody is strong, you have to be weak to balance. It's not like this. Balance means to achieve the state of pure love when you stay there, not driven by desires, by passions, by emotions. That's what it means. Balance is an inner state of being, remember? It doesn't depend on people or circumstances outside. So you need to be balanced in work also, what that means, being detached, but being selfless is very important. Because only when you are selfless, when you have the spirit of karma yogi, karma yoga within you, you are detached from results. At that time, you can be calm in your work. Whatever you do, doesn't matter. Otherwise, again, it is a chasing after some external goal, depending on praise and censure, depending on gains, depending on many factors, so therefore you lose your balance. So you have to learn to achieve balance in work and that through the spirit of detachment, through the spirit of Karma Yoga. And you need to be balanced also in daily life routine. What that means? Being disciplined regular, punctual, as opposed to being tamasic, which is not disciplined, or rajasic, that means driven by stimulations and desires and temptations, running after object of passion. And you need to be balanced in in general, in yoga, this is a very important formula. It is said that you need to be balanced in effort and relaxation. So what that means? That means work with ease. Being able to enjoy yourself, to relax, to entertain yourself while working work with joy of the spirit, not just driven. And like I said, being detached and selfless. Okay? So balance means being wise and knowledgeable. So it looks like very simple, being balanced, but you need to cultivate it. You need to be wise. So you need to understand the relationship between everything, how everything is connected together. So being balanced, in fact, is yoga. Yoga is balance. Balance is yoga. Seeing the unity in diversity. For example, Understanding the relationship between being vegetarian, being respectful of life, being respectful of the environment, the ecology, and the welfare and the health of the world. That means you are not vegetarian only because you want a healthy life for yourself. You want a healthy digestion for yourself. But also there is impact. 
when you are vegetarian, yeah, the whole planet is healthier. So that is um, the connection between yourself and the universe. You cannot be in balance without thinking of your connection with the world. Human life is out of balance. Yeah. And that's why it affects the climate change. And we talk about extreme weather nowadays. So we need to lead, lead back a life out of balance. A life a you know, balanced life. Unfortunately, we are quite egoistic. I mean, we think only of ourselves, our so-called self. We are also dogmatic. And we have certain idea and we want people to follow. And we have tunnel vision. I mean, you know, we have difficulty to see big picture. So that uh, is called rajas. You know? Rajas is a big problem. Seeing, seeing only your point of view, don't care about other point of view, follow a doctrine, follow a, you know, a way of thinking and want other people to follow. So when we don't have that sattvic frame of mind or that pure, open, tolerant frame of mind, then it is said we are caught in the will of samsara. I mean, we will just carry on and on following our own tendency in an endless chain of fulfillment of desires and creating of new desires and searching for fulfillment of new desires. So we are not escaping the mental pattern of our mind that is binding us to this will of samsara. We continuously blaming externally and uh, seeking our selfish fulfillment. So we, bottom line, we always talk about that, but we need to think, rethink. What our mind says is not necessarily the most pure and sattvic thing. But it's possible to change. It's possible to transform ourselves, to purify our mind. And yoga is teaching us that. Slow down, purify our mind. Become a desireless person. Because desire causes actions, we talk about that. And action strengthen desire. Desire are insatiable. So that's why it's so important to cultivate this attitude of karma yoga, you know, selfless action. Don't want anything. I don't want anything. Offering result of one's action. Okay, so yoga, the practice of yoga brings back balance. So now see, in Hatha Yoga, we have different posture. 
inverted torso. Um, forward bend, backward bend, twist. Yeah. The we have balancing pose at the end of the series. So why the balancing pose in the Shivananda Yoga system will be placed at the end? And the headstand, the inverted pose, would be in the beginning. So the idea is, you have to come back to balance first by connecting with the divine, you can say with the consciousness, that is within and that comes from up high. So that's why when you are in a headstand, you stimulate your brain, you have to be balanced because otherwise you fall because you are not used to be in that posture. Yeah, the blood coming down to your brain and it is said it's a very high spiritual pose. So that you start with inverted pose and then you know forward bend, backward bend, and so on. And then you finish with standing pose. And when you do the standing pose at the end, after you have gone through the sequence then you become very grounded. You do the balancing pose. Okay? And at that time, your focus is external. In the beginning, your focus has to be internal. And then eventually, when you are in a balancing pose, you are composing with the world you interact with the world without losing balance. So that is the balancing pose. So the idea is that you have to go through this inner work and eventually you become balanced and eventually you can work with the world. So you need to develop all the time good postures and have us be able to have a straight spine yeah, without tension, without protruding forward or backward to find balance. You need to give equal attention to the left and to the right to help balance. Okay? So that's how in Hatha Yoga, we train ourselves to be in balance. We train our body, our energy, and eventually our mind. In Hatha Yoga, we also have the practice of Pranayama, or more specifically, Anuloma Viloma, the alternate nostril breath. So, you know this already, we have class about this, how this type of breathing exercise help you to achieve balance internally between the energies of male and female, yang and yin, hot and cool, left and right brain, the active side and the passive side of our personalities, the logical side and the emotional side of our personality, and it helps us to balance tension and relaxation in our daily life. That's why yoga promotes the practice of anuloma viloma every day, even few times a day. Only when the energies 
a balance, we can achieve higher consciousness. So in yoga, we have a whole wing of the practice that is advanced practice, but only when we have achieved balance. So when you are a yogi, a yogi practitioner, you aim towards being balanced. In this way, we are helping the whole world. Okay, so it's not just only for us. We bring back balance for the whole world. There is, there is one practice in yoga that is essential to bring back your balance. And that is the practice of yamas and niyamas. You remember, that's the foundation of the Eight Limbs Yoga. Yamas is abstentions, things that you should refrain from, even though it's very easy to do. And Niyamas is things that you need to do, even though it is more difficult to do. So the number one practice that bring back balance is ahimsa. Ahimsa means the practice of nonviolence, the control of our anger. You can say it's a practice of respect. Respecting other people as our own self. The number two is a practice of satya or truthfulness. Try to be open and sincere, not telling lies. Okay. And number three, asteya, which is not stealing, no envy. Stealing even in mind, when you are envious, you're stealing in mind. Number four is Brahmacharya, control of sensual and sexual energy, control of lustful tendency. Because if you don't control, you function out of your animal instinct, it's very difficult to find inner balance because the sensual tendency and sexual energy are very strong, very powerful. It will pull us out of balance. And from there come a lot of other strong emotions. So our life is out of control. We don't connect the dot, but actually it's a uh, influence a lot of aspects of our life. Aparigraha is no accumulation, no greed. What that means? You need to take what you need only. Don't hoard. Hoarding means uh, keeping things more than what you need. At that time, you allowed the whole world to be able to achieve also what they need. But now when you look around, it's sometimes incredible. Some people are so, so rich, so wealthy, they live in luxury. When other people don't have anything. This is uh, the out of balance state of mind. Now the niyama means the thing that you need to do. Saucha, the practice of purity in intention and purity outside. 
Santosha, the practice of contentment, don't run after desire, tapas, the practice of uh, self-restraint, austerity, swadhyaya, the study of scriptures that remind us of the true picture of our life, who am I, and Ishwara Pranidhana, which is the practice of self-surrender. What that means? Self-surrender means uh, recognize that there is something more than yourself. Recognize the, the higher will and don't be selfish. Okay? So again, being in balance, uh, I remind you a very nice uh, uh, analogy, which is the analogy of the lotus flower in the lotus pond. What that means, it means try to be in the world and out of the world. What does that mean? Keep your purity, keep your fragrance like the lotus flower, even though the lotus flower grow out of the mud. I mean, you cannot expect this life to change to your criteria. A lot of things going on, a lot of things not necessarily correct going on, a lot of incredible things you know, in people, in surrounding, but you still have to keep balance. Being in the world and out of the world, that means you still have to keep your sanity, keep your uh, spiritual health, keep your inner connection, keep your remembrance of the true nature of the beautiful Satchidan and the Atman, you have to keep that in your heart as your base and then you function in this world. You behave as best as you can following yamas, niyamas as best as you can. You don't assume that you are perfect yeah? and you don't expect other people to be perfect you work on yourself. You are living in this world and at the same time out of this world. So this is the key. So the key is the word being detached. This detachment is based on discrimination which means understanding the true nature of the world of objects. See, this is a fundamental uh, point of philosophy. If you don't get that, it's very difficult to go further. If you don't get that this world, the world of objects projected out of your mind, is imperfect. It's like we see the snake and we get very scared because we have experience that the snake bites us. But philosophy says, no, you see through your eyes. That's why. But now, try to see through your heart, your pure heart or your intuitive intelligence and you see there is no snake there. There is no imperfection there. So the more that you be able to remember that, the more you be able to be detached. Instead of being aggravated every time when somebody says something or something happened we easily lose our balance. 
So being balanced means being detached and being able to use our higher intelligence to not be attached to this world of our mind, projected by our mind. You see? So this is philosophy. Yeah? Have a certain way of being in this world. Don't believe that what you see, what you what you see, the house, the people around, the traffic, the economy, whatever that you see, don't believe it to be the truth. You have to develop your intuitive eye to see something transcendental. Transcendental means beyond your own mind. We have to realize deep within us. And that's why this is the first step. If you don't realize this, you will be constantly struggling, losing yourself, angry, going through the roller coaster. But we have to realize the illusory nature of objects, the changing, the imperfect, the failing of the objects to give us happiness. So that's why we have to withdraw and have an inner life. Not like you reject the world, not like you dislike the world, not like that. You are detached because you know for sure that you don't expect anything from this changing world, but you are continuously working on keeping yourself centered in the truth of yourself that is always there and it will not let you down. We have to use our intelligence to remember our past experience, how the mind has projected so many illusions and we have experienced them all and we do not get to where we want. The yogi practice yoga to keep the mind still or concentrated, anchored in the present, not allowing the mind to project promises outside. The yogi practice called withdrawing of the senses or Pratyahara, the turning inward, the withdrawing of the senses, the calming of the emotions. So there is a, a story I want to tell, the story of this king called King Janaka. He's uh, famous to be a wise king. And then somebody come and say, you know, I don't believe you. Yeah, how can you be wise? You live in a palace, you have so many servants, you have so many things, you, know, you live a, a very comfortable life. How can you can be wise? So then the King Janaka told uh, the man, the doubter, it's okay, um, if you can cross the city, then I, uh, I would answer you. Just walk across the city and then he put a, a, a bucket of water full on top of the head of this man and he said okay you have to walk in balance <laughs> carrying the bucket of water across the city and then I will give you the answer so meanwhile the man is walking he's very much paying attention to the bucket because he, he cannot spill the water and then the king sent different kind of temptations you know dancing girls and <laughs> music and so much temptations and 
sometimes you know also some scaring things and so the man is very very attentive looking at the bucket and try not to to spill water and they walk very difficultly across so then the the king said now you understand <laughs> i can live in these conditions whatever conditions but my mind is constantly focused on the self i am detached i don't see anything so detachment does not mean not having yeah but detachment means that you are completely, completely focused on that one truth of the self. And then everything else is not so important. Okay? So, we call that state Samadhana. Samadhana. This is uh, one of the six virtues that is prescribed by the teacher Shankaracharya to the Vedantic students. Samadhana is a state of concentration on the truth or the self exclusively and not losing oneself. To keep balance, okay, you have to avoid extremes. Extreme good uh, extreme bad, anything extreme. Why? Because anything extreme will have the opposite effect. If you're extreme good in anything, yeah, you will fall. Yeah, you fall where you are strong. So this is a mistake. People think that you are strong in something and you feel very proud of your strength. Look at me, I can do this and look at me, my quality is this, that. But you have no idea. And the, more, the moment that you, have, you feel strong and you're proud of something, you will fall. There will be some, something that will come and challenge you exactly that. And then you'll be angry. Yeah. You'll be upset, and that's when you are losing yourself. When you're angry, when you're upset, yeah, you are losing yourself. Okay? Yourself is right there. But some belief about yourself, that you are good or you are bad, this is a problem. So it means what? You need to cultivate that you become good in everything. Yeah, what that means? Yeah, not like you become perfectionistic, but being open. And you keep an eye on the goal of self-realization all the time. You have a vision, like 360 degrees vision. Yeah? It's like you are holding the, um, the tree pose. You are on one foot, your eyes is fixated one point further away. You have the vision 360 degrees almost. And you keep yourself in balance. Your breath is very calm. And somebody prays you, oh, you have a very good tree pose. Yeah, you will not fall. And somebody come criticize you. You are an advanced yogi and look at your pose, sir. It's all curved, not very good. And you are not going to lose your balance. Yeah. Any thought coming in your mind, you're not going to lose your balance. Your eyes are fixated on the goal. Okay? Sometimes you might lose balance a little bit. You might move a little bit. You, know, you go sideways a little bit. You know, in life, you get angry a little bit of something. Or you have a little bit sadness about something. Or you are attached a little bit towards something. Fine. But you never lose yourself completely. So that's the point. Samadhana. You are fixated. You are calm. You possess yourself. Your self-confidence. Yeah? You are not uh, prideful. You are not hateful. You are not, um, you know, fixating on a moving target outside of you. Yeah? You are fixating on something that is very stable within you. And 
you never lose yourself completely. You do not lose your path. So it is like that, standing on the three poles. Balance with attention, samadhana, means also concentration on your inner goal. Or we say in yoga, the practice of equanimity. Equanimity means balance. To achieve balance, you need to be patient. Okay? Because it's an inner state, it's not something that you can get from outside. So it comes gradually. As we change our patterns of thinking, and as we change our behavior, as we stay away from the I and the mind, yeah, the selfish idea of who you are, and what you possess, we slowly get back into the state of inner balance. So when we achieve that state of inner balance, we don't feel the same. We feel very differently. Okay? We'll be able to live in the present. We'll be able to let go of the past and we'll be able to let go of the future. So we are in possession of ourselves in the present. Imagine that state. We'll be able to renounce. Renounce our idea, renounce our passions, renounce our thoughts, renounce our ego. It does not cost us anything to let go of our thoughts, except our fear and our attachment to our ego. So when you are in that state of inner balance, you don't have fear. You don't have to cling to anything. You are not afraid of what people think about you. You're free from attachment. And all the negative emotional habits are not having grip over you. Okay, so balance, does that mean not having? You, know, you renounce objects, not because you don't have. You renounce objects because you find something better within. Yeah. So that's about it that we've been talking about. So continue. That's all the same theme every week, different aspect. Continue your spiritual life. Yeah. Live life from a larger perspective. The moment that you find yourself too zoomed in, too attached, too narrow, too limited, too egoistic, you need to get out. You need to open up because it will make you suffer. It will make you lose balance sooner or later. So live life from a larger perspective not only from your sensual kind of life. Yeah, don't believe that this sensual life that you see is the reality. Remember your purpose of life, which is self-realization to find the truth. Remember that you are immortal spirit. Maintain your inner peace. Maintain your selfless love. Maintain your sense of fulfillment without desire. Participate in life. Don't be afraid.
but live life to the fullest without the up and the down of the emotions. Okay? So that is the yoga of balance. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, so next week there will be the 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 satsang, but given by another Swami. I'm not sure who yet, uh, because I will be traveling. Okay, and then um, we will have to adjust our time because. Um, uh, I will be in a completely different time zone. Yeah, so I will be leaving Vietnam. I will be in different time zone. So we will make announcement uh, how it would work. Okay, so stay in balance, no matter what, even though the time zone change. <laughs> it's not easy for me. <laughs> And the jet lag come, you know, when you are completely, you don't know where you are. <laughs> you have to stay in a state of inner balance. Okay, so we see you uh, next time. All right? So thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Yeah, Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs>